And today I'm going to detail the role of copper in our mitochondria. Simply put, mitochondria are fueled by copper because copper is needed to build cytochrome C oxidase, the metabolic enzyme that functions as the final enzymatic step in the electron transport chain that harvests energy for the mitochondria's production of our universal energy currency, adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, and also catalyzes the reduction of oxygen to water. Cytochrome C oxidase also requires iron, and as I'll demonstrate to you, the accessibility of iron is heavily dependent on copper. Copper is also a cofactor for the mitochondria's production of the antioxidant enzyme superoxide dismutase, or SOD, which among countless other benefits, relieves electron transport generated oxidative stress. So where does iron fit into this? Copper's role in mitochondrial function is related to mitochondrial iron uptake, as copper is a cofactor in the mitochondria's generation of the iron-sulfur clusters that are essential components of the mitochondrial enzyme ferrochelates, which catalyzes the conversion of iron into the heme portion of the oxygen-transporting red blood cell protein hemoglobin. Part of this process involves ceruloplasmin, a primary copper-transporting liver protein that carries copper around the body and is required for binding iron to the copper-dependent liver protein transferrin, which, as the name implies, transports iron to wherever it's needed, but primarily the bone marrow, where iron is then incorporated into the hemoglobin of red blood cells. So because copper so vastly improves iron absorption and utilization, an ongoing copper deficiency can cause symptoms of anemia. A deficiency of copper will obviously greatly interfere with cytochrome C oxidase production, leading to a decrease in mitochondrial ATP production and an impairment in the efficiency of oxygen utilization. Daily copper supplementation is extremely important, particularly if you're a meat eater like me, because muscle meat is rich in both iron and zinc, but very low in copper. Organ meats like liver, however, are much better sources of copper. Also, there are many things in our daily life, like constant stress, high fructose corn syrup, NSAID pain relievers, and even the all too common pesticide glyphosate, that steeply deplete copper. You can also definitely take copper as a daily supplement, where it's usually available as a 2 to 3 milligram daily dose. And you should absolutely be taking some copper every day, especially if you're already taking zinc, which, in high doses, reduces copper absorption. An interesting source of supplemental copper that not many people think of is supplemental L-citrulline, which is amazing for muscle building and blood flow, among other benefits. As a supplement, L-citrulline is bound to a copper-based salt, which increases citrulline's overall stability. So if you're already taking supplemental L-citrulline as part of a muscle building regimen, then this could serve as one small source of daily copper, although I'd still take a separate daily copper dose. I hope this illustrates for you the critical importance of copper to the daily functions of our mitochondria, and also why you should take some supplemental copper every day. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.